Praise God. Man, I've just been sitting and reading more and more. Hallelujah. Even though I've been saved for some time and I've been walking in this way. It's still profound to me every time I go through it. Hallelujah. The gospel. Admitting there's a problem is a part of real recovery. If you don't know the Lord, this is the start of real discovery. We love to sit and sin because to the flesh it is luxury. Because of lust within, now I know there was no real love in me. Satanic, let's recognize it for what it be. The gospel was preached to me. Now I feel guilty suddenly. The Lord sent the Holy Spirit to come for me and comfort me. Like Moses heard the voice talking out of the burning shrubbery. When I stop and think about the Father's love for me, I feel remorse ain't nothing warm, fuzzy and cuddly. I think of Jesus damn near beat to death, bloody and suffering. Isaiah 49, the Father said it's nothing but a thing. That his son should be the one from them to come and bring salvation. Took the form of a servant to become the king. His resurrection to many is a troubling thing. The disciples saw him alive again. It wasn't tell a dream. My story, my story. Yeah, share my story, gospel story. Cause the beginning of the story is just as good as the end. The blood of Jesus Christ, every man, once a sinner man, can be free again. I want to be free again. I'm about to take it deeper, so I feel the need to give you warning. As I talk about the birth of Christ, it's not for Christmas morning. The essence of the kingdom of God is hidden in this story. And why the Magi showed up with gifts for his adorning. If we pay attention, the words of Mary were really candid. Luke chapter 1, the rich will be sent away empty-handed. I point this out, some Christians can't stand it. They feel what Jesus told the rich man was suggested and not demanded. Won't find this in the list of many believers' favorite scriptures. Conflicted, because most of our life we've been chasing riches christ told the young ruler give up his wealth to make a difference walked away sad because that plan got in the way of business we claim we wouldn't make that same decision that's easy to say when you possibly haven't been put in that same position i pray the holy spirit bring conviction we haven't proven we're on the path because we joined up with vain religion story, story yeah share my story gospel story the beginning of the story is just as good as the end. The blood of Jesus Christ, every man, once a sinner man, can be free again. I want to be free again. Yeah. A sinner can't please the Father, that's why only Messiah could, because the Son is God, it is on this truth that I have stood. Yeah, we all deserve to burn like some firewood. There was no need for Christ to die for me if I am good. If I have to stand before the Father on my own merit, I'll look like a child in trouble for cussing his own parent. Disobedient and so careless, I'm only saved, not soft, because the Lord Jesus was so fearless. Thank the steward of the vineyard for saving the dying tree, whose branches were withered. He gets credit entirely. Dug the trench, filled it with dung seed and fertilizer were flung by his faith. I produced this fruit that was inside of me. He said, admit your guilt, repent from filth and cry to me. I already know who you are, so you can't lie to me. Now get down and bow to my son on the right side of me. He is Lord and Savior. You are not, and so don't try to be. My story, my story. Yeah, share my story, gospel story. The beginning of the story is just as good as the end. The blood of Jesus Christ, every man wants a sinner man, can be free again. I want to be free again. Won't you tell my story, my story. Yeah, share my story, gospel story. Cause the beginning of the story is just as good as the end. The blood of Jesus Christ, every man wants a sinner man, can be free again. I want to be free again. Oh. Hallelujah! 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 Thank you, Lord. Yo, 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 what's good with it? What y'all talking about? It's Sunday night. Didn't just get paid. Mm, mm. Now I'm, I'm about to mess up an old classic. <laughs> y'all remember that song, Just Got Paid This Friday Night? What was that? Uh, Johnny Kemp, I think. Yo, what's going on with y'all, man? 
Salute, salute. We got a couple people in the building. All right, that's what's up. I hope that your weekend was well for all of you who uh, observed the Shabbat yesterday. I pray that you're all in good spirits, feeling slightly well rested and all that, about to get ready to get back to the young work week. And for those of you down south who kids are going back to school, most high bless y'all. And uh, for you up north, you guys got a few more weeks before your kids be back out there. And now you back to that race, right? So um, I just want to say salute to all of y'all once again. Tonight is the open dojo. The open dojo format is this. You come on. We talk about what you want to talk about. Now, I promised those of you who were on last week, Sunday, that if I did the Bible dojo, the open dojo again this week, this Sunday, that I would take questions from the audience first. The last two or three Bible open dojos, a few folk have hit that link and come back in here. What link, Zadok? Well, for those of you on um, YouTube, just look at the chat. You'll see that the link to come holler at your boy is pinned to the top of the chat uh, on YouTube and on Facebook. And so I do prefer to actually talk to people. That's why I don't prepare a teaching. I get to talk at y'all all the time. You feel me? Y'all be listening and stuff, and I appreciate that. Salute to y'all. But I also love to talk to people because I learn a lot, and it's more edifying for me to just be a face behind a camera sitting up here in upstate New York I would rather talk to you. I love to be quiet for a good five, 10 minutes, let you ramble on and put a question on the table or express a thought, male and female. But tonight, I'm going to take questions from the audience first, because a lot of people over the last couple of weeks had questions that just, I never got to them questions, you feel me? So most high bless y'all once again, all of you tuning in through the YouTube, the Facebook and on Clubhouse. If you are led tonight, I hope that you would consider sharing this out on your platforms, Facebook or YouTube. If you're not a subscriber and this is your first time being here on YouTube, I actually would consider becoming one. Hit that notification bell. It lets you know when the kid go live. If you're on Facebook, become a follower. Uh, give me them hearts and them thumbs up. It's vanity, but it's social media. And if you're on Clubhouse, I actually ask you to hit that greenhouse at the top. Become a member of the Bible Dojo Room. If any of you decide that, you know what, I want to support this brother and you feel like you want to leave a financial contribution, just look at the ticker on the bottom of the screen. It gives you the few ways that that's uh, doable. If you want to reach out to me for building purposes, look at my email address on the, on the ticker as well. And for those of you listening in through the clubhouse, just hit my um, bot, check my bio and the same information is there for you as well. So let me see what we got going on over here. Oh, that's the link. Okay, that's me. Hey, what up, what up, Zadok? Salute to Davion Murphy. What's good with you, King? Most high bless you, homie. Stephanie M. Hello. Good evening. Allison Lacardi. It just popped up. I didn't realize I was subscribed. Hey, salute. You subscribed. What's going on? How you doing? Mikaela. 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 I think I'm saying it right with Michaelia, right? Shalom to you, sis. <laughs> My life totally was going on with it. Salute, salute, Shalom. You love y'all, huh? That's just what you do. You just love y'all. That's what's up. Salute, welcome. Thank you for being here this evening. Ah, tapping in through the YouTube. What up with the truth seeker? Uh huh. Look at the plumber. What's good, brother Jermaine? Hope all is well with you. Sister V, love, peace, and blessings to you and yours. Queen Felicia, what's going on, sis? Jason Cam 4, salute, salute. Look at my homie in the building. What's good with the Brody? What's up with you, Ock? My bro, BA in the building. Yeah, yeah. My man, yo, what up, host? Host, what's good with it? Salute to you, homie. Most high bless you, my guy. That's what's up. My bro, Jehoshaphat, man. And I've had a few stragglers come in and out of the clubhouse, but hopefully some will come back in. You heard? Salute to brother Jermaine916. What's good with it? Yeah, so, hey, if you didn't know, now you know. It's your brother Zadok Ben Israel, a.k.a. the God Hop MC, hashtag just the best of nobody special, a.k.a. Young Chimney. Because I made for what I made small, Ben Kitor. Son of Smoke is what they call me, you heard? <laughs> hey, salute to my bro, Sean McGee in the building. What's good with it, homie? 
So, hey, y'all, the Bible Dojo is open. I want you to come on up in here, take your shoes off, check your sock game, make sure you're on point, and let's start these warm-up cotters, and let's see how biblical it gets. Now, remember, I want you to go ahead, and I want you to type that in, you know what I mean? Get it in. Hey, you know what? Hey, Sean, I seen that email, bro. I, I seen the email you sent because you want that music. And, bro, I really am trying to keep that in my head because I'm so busy every day, bro. My mornings are early and my days are long. You feel what I'm saying? And I'm doing construction work. And the last thing that be on my mind is the post office. But what I'm going to do, because where I'm sitting, y'all see this box over here in the corner behind me? In that box. I got the CDs, bro. They right there, Sean. So I'm just slacking or I'm forgetful because the CDs right there. They right there. <laughs> so yo, I, I the, um most high willing, I'm gonna uh take those and I'm gonna actually put them in my work bag. And so I may forget about it, but I'm in the work truck and I go to my work bag and boom, I got these two, three CDs in there. And that'll remind me, oh, yo, you got to send these to Sean. But you got me now. You got me. You on my helmet, son. <laughs> you got me now. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, sis. Ben Kitor. So, young Smoke, son of son of Smoke. What's good with Victor Nunez? Salute to you, King. Marcus Jarman in the building. Salute, salute. Mariah, welcome, welcome, welcome. So, hey, y'all. Most high bless y'all. Oh, I see my bro is in the young bag. Hold on. What good with you, dog? What's good with you, my G? Oh, uh, nothing much, man. Just hanging in there, bro. Good to see you, man. I'm saying to you, man. Oh, I'll let you know too, man. We're trying to trying to put together something down here, man. How do you and whatnot? We're in the exploratory uh planning stage, man. We want you to slide down for that joint, though. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh. see, that's yeah. an excuse for me to go to Georgia too. Yeah, hey, yo, I by, by Yah's grace, man. Whatever y'all come up with, just let me know. And as long as we got enough time, man, by His grace, bro, we can work that out. Yeah, you know, man, we're trying to do it around probably around October, November. We wanted it November. Okay, I I do I do y'all willing? I know I'm supposed to go fellowship with some brethren. I'm gonna say that second weekend in October in uh, North Carolina, and then we're supposed to be doing a commute. I'm supposed to be doing a prayer walk in Atlanta, Georgia, that same weekend. So as long as it's like past, but I, I see, but I see our man uh, Snipes up there in Detroit. So he gonna be there to the same event in North Carolina. You gonna be at? That's okay. why, but a little later, cause he gonna be he gonna slide down here for it. It hit my mind yesterday. Okay, brother Benai them doing that there so i know he ain't gonna be able to slide it, it'd be too much logistically for him to try yeah. to get here and get there so that's why i say november see it'll still be relatively warm around these parts oh yeah yeah down there where y'all at yeah that's vacation time for me getting a little yeah. chilly up here i leave the, i leave up here from bubble goose mode the shorts coming down there where y'all at real talk man shoot man that jump been when i was young it used to get cold up here man it, it, it don't do that no more and it, it mainly would be january february Nah, it don't even get cold no more, man. Mm. It might be 15 days total. Oh, wow. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. It's official. Yeah, yeah. It is in the 80s and 90s, man. Yeah, it used to get cold up here, man. You know what I'm saying? Maybe not cold as compared to other places, but right. we, we had days where the highs wouldn't get past 50. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. That It don't happen like that no more. Mm. I, I don't care for the cold. <laughs> no, you're a Florida boy for real. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, hey, bro, sit back and relax, Ock, because we about to get it in and, you know. Yeah, I know you said last week. We're going to get your edification on your. So I I'm going to just sit back. I know you say you're going to deal with the questions in the uh in the chat, in the comment section. Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, that's what's up. Yes, sir. Hey, brethren, what's good with y'all? I see a few more of you have come up in here. Most high bless y'all. Steven Mikael, salute to you in the household. T. Dizzle, what's going on with it? Marcus Jones, young Padawan in the building. <clears throat> Build up. Salute, salute to you. Who else we got here? Ah, yes. Look at sis. She brew light. What's going on, sis? Hakodesh. What's good? What's good with it, bro? Bazooka the disciple in the building. All right, y'all. We, yeah, we got enough folk up in here. So, Y'all go ahead and y'all start to throw them questions up in there. 
I said, you know, the most high got a real one on track when he's sporting a Buffalo hat. Hey, bro, you already know what it is. You know what I mean? Our team is the, for the Super Bowl favorite this year. Stop playing. Now, that don't mean we're going to win no Super Bowl, but it's been a minute since, it, you know, since the Jim Kelly and Thurman, Andre uh, Reed days. We ain't been no nothing with football. Tom Brady came over this way and shut us up for two decades. We, we was born and grew up to a whole grown man. <laughs> so you already know how that go, bro. So yeah, homie. We, yeah, we wear it proud, homie. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So a hey, salute to all of y'all. Wide Awake is in the building. Welcome, welcome, King. So one thing that I want to uh, get on here is the chat tonight. I promised that I would uh, pay more attention to the chat tonight and see what's happening, see what the people want to talk about. So by Yah's grace, we'll be able to edify. So here go the first question I see. Um, I have a question. What is your opinion, understanding of what is holy? Who are the dogs? What are our pearls? And who are the swine? Okay, that's really good. So sis, first thing I'm going to do is open my Bible. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open my young Bible, right? So here we go. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the dog. I'm, I'm going to bring up something. And th there's a few different scenarios, but I'm going to show you one of the things in the text that some people can totally miss. And we're going to start in Isaiah 56. I'm going to share the screen. All right, there we go. So look at here, sis. So uh, this is the most high talking about the nation of Israel, right? He says, uh, here it says in Isaiah 56 and 8, the Lord God, which gathereth the outcasts of Israel, say, if yet will I gather others to him besides those that are gathered unto him. All ye beasts of the field come to devour, yea, all ye beasts in the forest. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yeah, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. These are the leaders of the government of Israel. When the Most High got displeased with the people, he started to, uh, 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 he started to curse them and say, hey, you all just won't be able to bring forth what is necessary. So here in the Bible itself, uh-oh, oh, 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 I'm like, where'd that come from? Hey, yo, oh, meet your mic, ah? Yes, sir. Okay, there you go. I'm like, what in the world? Oh, okay, brethren. So as I was saying, what you have here is the leadership of the household of Israel, right? And the most high is calling them dogs. And the reason why this is profound is because when 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 you look at the leadership of the government, he's basically saying that, hey, they have fallen out the way and they're like greedy dogs. They're just out for their own selves. They are no longer taking care of the leadership and the true direction for the people right so look at this right here i'm going to take you to hold on is it jeremiah i'm looking for hold on right quick let me oh here we go lamentations chapter four so that was isaiah right so let's go over to lamentations four okay and so here in the book of Lamentations, chapter four, this is talking about Zion, right? Look at this. Chapter four down to about verse 12. The kings of the earth and all the inhabitants of the world would not have believed that the adversary and the enemy should have entered into the gates of Jerusalem. For the sins of her prophets and the iniquities of her priests that have shed the blood of the just in the midst of her. They, has they have wandered as blind men in the streets. 
They have polluted themselves with blood so that no man can touch their garments, right? So when we go back to Isaiah, once again, his watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They can't bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. They are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand, meaning that their leadership, but they are not walking correctly in the spirit of God, nor being obedient. And look at how they are the ones oppressing their own people. So when you read in the scripture and it says outside the city are dogs and those of fornicators and all of those who won't make it into the city in the book of Revelation 22, is it? Hold on for a second. I think that's Revelation 22. Yeah, it's 22, 14. Yeah. Okay. So right here it says, so this is one kind of dog. It's some more, but hold on. Uh... Right here, Revelation 22, look at what he says here. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without, meaning outside, are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. This isn't talking about like literal barking dogs. This is describing a certain kind of individual. And we saw where the most high, when he was upset with Israel, he called their government leadership filthy, greedy dogs. He didn't even say they're light dogs. He just, he didn't even use a metaphor. He It's metaphoric, but he used it directly to describe them, right? Now, let's, you also have another kind of dog. And this one right here could be kind of touchy to people, but understand what's being said. Let's go back to the Torah. Let's go to Deuteronomy 23. Here in the book of Deuteronomy 23. As we get there, I want to start a roughly around verse. Uh, here we go. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for anybody. For even both these are abomination unto Yahuwah, thy Elohim. So, sis, if you're following the narrative here, what we have painted here is whoredom prostitution, male and female prostitutes. They, you got whore and sodomite, which is meaning the male prostitutes. The Lord, So he said, don't bring the price of a whore nor the, the money from a dog. What is he talking about? What they make from whoring themselves out. The most high is saying, hey, that right there, don't bring that into my house as money to be offered to me because both of them things are an abomination to me. So whoever wants to live that lifestyle and not walk in repentance are those who you will not find walking into the kingdom of Yah as well. Now, I'm not going to bring up the, you know, the, this, uh, I believe it was a Syrophoenician woman or something like that. You had a woman who was a stranger and she came asking for her daughter to be healed. And yes, she was said, um, you don't give the dogs, the children's meat. At the end of the day, a dog is subservient to a person. Even a child is the leader of a dog in a house. So Yeshua used that because at the end of the day, foreign nations were seen as those who don't believe, those who don't walk in righteousness. So sometimes dog was used toward them. The unbelieving, that phrase in that parable was talking about an unbelieving stranger in that context. But I want to go to this here because you asked something about what are our pearls and what does it mean to cast them before it's line, right? Okay, here we go. Look at this parable from Yeshua. Let's go to Matthew 13, sis. And I'm going to show you this right quick. And then, Brother Dwayne, if you got something you can add for edification to the question, please feel free. So here we're going to go to this parable that Yeshua gave in Matthew 13, right? And let's start around 
the mustard seed, the leather, the tears, hidden treasure. Okay, check this out. The kingdom of heaven is like a man that's uh, is like unto a merchant man seeking good pearls. And when he had found one pearl of great price, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. So what is this pearl here? It said the kingdom of heaven is like a man who finds pearls. The treasure, that's what the pearl really represents at the end of the day. It's a euphemism. And since I'm going to tell you, our treasure is the word of Yah. To receive his word and to understand his truth, that's really the, what the kingdom of heaven is like. And so what are your pearls? It is the words of salvation that you have to give to, to, to mankind. And so you have to be careful, just like dog was used in a sense, swine, an individual or individuals who, how can I say it? I, I'll show you another example. It's not going to say swine, but I'm understanding the spirit of what it's trying to tell us, right? So I believe that there's a text where, um, <clears throat> excuse me where he talks about um where he talks about a uh he talks about a heretic and what did he say after the first or the second oh that's that's in titus what's that's that brother the, it's in titus oh thank you yes titus 3 yep okay thanks for saying that brought it right to the young memory y'all see that y'all see that biblical roller decks right there he knew where it was he like what well, was taking you so long Zeta? okay so Titus chapter three, look at this, sis, right here in Titus three and a roughly around verse here, but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable in vain. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth being condemned of himself. What is a heretic? So, so, so if you're given the truth of Yah's word, you can come to an individual once, maybe twice, but after you see there is no fruit and you trying to present this to them and they're rejecting it, it's telling you, leave them alone, reject them. You know what that is? Stop casting your pearl because this person is showing themselves to be swine. And even among those who are supposed to be those who have understanding, Avoid the foolish questions, the arguments and the contentions all about the law and what people got to do and not do this, that, and the third. You preach the gospel. So even though you might have an opinion on genealogies and you might think you got great understandings about the law, the things that tend unto peace. Look, if this going to bring strife and envy among us and division, I'm done with it. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's not profitable. The only things that are profitable are the things that come unto uh, uh, making sure your brother or your sister in the faith maintain good works. As if you read up, it, it, uh, it addresses it in a few verses before this. So, sis, them would be my answers to your questions. Hey, brother Dwayne, you got anything that come to mind that you think might edify her question? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we, I just I, back, over, I, back over this with, with them like maybe two months ago because we dealt with this like three, four years ago. So just do me a favor, bro. Run, cause so she can see it and hear. Start with Ezekiel twelve and nine before I even go to time out of just read okay. Ezekiel. Ezekiel twelve and nine. My bad, my bad, my bad. That's my fault. Ecclesiastes twelve and nine. That's my fault. Okay. All right. Go ahead, run it, bro. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yeah, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought out to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. That's good right there, bro. You see how it says he sought out many proverbs? When you look up pearls in the Greek, by definition, that word means proverbs, a word of great value. Mm, nice. So when you, look at, when you look at dog and you look it up in Greek, it means a person of an impure mind. So what you're dealing with is what you would see. And, and, and Proverbs, when I talk about an imputed man, which is basically a perverse or deprived man, you know what I'm saying? Very froward and rebellious. So when you're dealing with what is set apart, you don't give that to the rebellious. 
you know what I'm talking about? You pretty much just leave them alone. So then when you take don't cast your pearls before swine, then you're looking at, because what are the Proverbs? Well, the testimony of Yahushua is the Ruach of prophecy, the dark sentences. You know what I'm saying? These dark sentences was the mystery that was kept secret since the world began, but now it's been manifested to us in these last times for salvation. So you're not supposed to give, which truth be told, most brews out here don't even hold the Proverbs to cast them before swine in the first place. You know what I'm talking about? But those who do, they have enough wisdom to know if you are an unclean, abominable individual, I'm not giving you that, which is when you actually see Yahushua doing that in his ministry. He did not give the scribes and Pharisees that information. You know what I'm talking about? He gave it to the people, but he didn't give it to them because he knew. See, that's where a lot of people get the game twisted. I'm glad you read the, the Titus because that's exactly what he told his apostles to do. He said, if they don't accept it, leave them alone. See, most of us, we get in the word of you trying to force people who conscious has been seared with a hot iron to receive something that they're telling you that they don't want. And if we were to go back into the times of the apostles, those men wouldn't have done that. You read what Paul say. He contended with them people about the kingdom for a set amount of time. But when them men began to blaspheme, he left. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, I'm not going to sit here and keep going back and forth with y'all if you're going to blaspheme or it's, a, or it's apparent that you don't want to receive it. So what it's dealing with is you don't give that which is set apart to unclean minded men. Don't give it to them. You got the word, words of great value, which you just used that, that Matthew 13 apropos in, in regards to the that being a, uh, the kingdom of Shamahim being a great value, which is the witness of Yahusha, and you bury that in your heart and guard it, you don't give that to unclean people. You don't give that to abominable people. You don't give it to them. I know it sounds harsh because we get it in our mind, but we should preach the gospel to everybody. You let the word go forth to everybody, but you don't necessarily go to an individual and give that to them. And they showing you that they're not, they have deemed themselves unworthy of that because they rejected it. So you don't give it to them. You know what I'm talking about? But yeah, y'all look the words up for yourself and you'll see that. That pearls, Woo. proverb of great value. And yeah, you that dropped a baby, you, you dropped a baby anvil on my foot with that one. I I bro, I did not know that um that in the Greek that proverb um was uh synonymous with a, a, a pearl. Absolutely. That's amazing. Thanks for that. Most yes, high sir. willing. I'm I'm putting that right in my quiver. Yes, sir. Mm, hey, hey, so sis. Um, um, prayerfully, what you heard from my bro and what I was able to say, uh, preceding him, that all together helps you as you continue to look for what it is that you're, you know, um, trying to understand. And thank you for the question. Thank you for being here this evening. Now we got another question up here. Salute to my homie Bazooka, the disciple. He said, "How do you deal with Romans six and 14? Well, you know what, brother Zook. We're going to go right over to Romans 4, I mean, Romans uh, 6 and 14. That's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Brother Dwayne, I appreciate you coming up here, Oct 2, to edify, because it's always good to hear another voice with a whole nother nuance to bring to the situation. I, it's, it's just overly valuable. I, I don't think enough people get it. People are used to sitting up, hearing some one preeminent person speak as if they got all the answers. And, you know, I, I just never was really about that kind of time. No doubt. Um, okay, so we here in Romans 6 and 14. Uh, so it says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Oh, well, yeah, we got that. We, we got that on uh, we got that right on deck right here. Now look at it. Excuse me. This is what I want to do. Here we go. What uh, uh verse 15? What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield your servant, yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Now, this is the thing. What's... What, 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 let me go to this. Let me go to this one. I can't remember this one. Hold on. Look at this, bro. Look at this. Oh, oh, I typed in the wrong word. I didn't. I can't. Remember. What you look? What you looking for, bro? I'm looking for this right here. <laughs> Second Peter one. 
That's what I was looking for. Um, now, 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 look at this, um, good brother, uh, Bazooka. It says, uh, grace, uh, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of, um, Elohim and Yeshua, our Lord, according as his divine power have given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So when we repent of our sins in Hamashiach, we are justified through him, through the forgiveness that comes with him, meaning that we are cleared of the guilt. The debt that we owe according to the breaking of the covenant has now been placed on him, whereas the scripture says he became sin for us who he who knew no sin became sin for us. Yeshua became sin. So if he became sin, now I'm under the impression, whether wrong or right, that we die in him. So when you die, you're no longer held to the covenant and the agreement. So your flesh, in a sense, in the will of God, in the spiritual narrative, has died in order that you might live. It says that we were um, we die in Christ and we are made alive in the spirit. And this is why the apostle said, we no longer know any man after the flesh. So you're looking at a flesh and blood man, yet you saying, this is my brother and I don't know him according to what? Him walking in the corruption and lust of this life. I know this brother to be walking what? In obedience to the commandments. But this is the thing. You're not under law in the sense that the law is any more condemning you. But it's not that he says, so what? It, does that statement mean that you could just walk in sin? You see this? It's if you died with Christ, you're no longer under whatever you were bound to the same way that if a husband die, his wife or if a wife die, her husband is no longer bound. They're no longer under that particular agreement. Dying in Christ takes us out of the old covenant and its requirements and brings us into the beginning of the walk with the father, excuse me, under the new covenant. And this is what Peter says here. He says, skipping down, he says, he told him to add, beside this, give all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, virtue, not to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, temperance, to temperance, patience, to patience, godliness to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if, for if, that's a that's conditional. Some people read this and make it seem like it's just talking about you. Just because I just read that in the scripture don't mean it's talking about me. It's talking to the church and letting us in the church know if, you know, if it's a conditional word. If. Like, like Yeshua told the disciples, he said, you are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. That Oh, you just my friends. No, 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 no. You're my friends if. So here, Peter says, for if these things be in you. See, you see how if you have these things in you and they abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Yeshua. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. And guess what? Have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. How are you purged from your old sin? The only way a man don't sin is if he's alive, if he's a, a perfect, or if that man dies. See, if you ain't if you ain't alive. You can't do nothing wrong before the most high. The scriptures say that when a man die, his good and his evil perish in the, in the day of his death. Even his very thought, he no longer has a, 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 a hand in anything done under the sun. So in effigy, they're using the language of when we repent in Christ, him standing in the gap for us. When he went into that grave, we went into that grave with him. But he was a perfect one who died. He became sin. Spiritual. Uh, 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 um, he became sin by the father's will in order to go in the grave. We, if our flesh and blood body go into the grave, you just die. That's not going to bring you salvation. So by the father's grace, 
What is grace? Grace ain't people say grace is like the the, the unearned gift, God's free uh, a gift of love to you. Yes, but you have to discover. Okay, so what do it look like? Well, this is what being under grace looks like than being under the law. Under the law, me and unfortunately my brother Dwayne, a hey, 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 Dwayne, we deserve death according to the law because of the stuff we done did already. By the time we found out about the most high, you and I already deserve death according to the law. Amen. Right? Amen. So since we already and all of you watching, you all deserve death. That's why you all repented because your repentance is an acknowledgement that what? Under the law, I deserve death. Well, Yeshua say basically die in me. So when we die in him, he gives us a measure of faith to start this process of the beginning of the newness of life. And that creature, like a baby, a baby hasn't done any sin before Yah. You know how I know? Because the scripture even tell you, remember in Isaiah chapter seven or chapter eight, when it talk about the child who would be the Emmanuel sign. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know, one thing it said, that proof that, it, one of the proofs of, of who Emmanuel would be was it says, before the child, has any understanding of good or evil. Um, Israel and Syria would be, their two kings would be taken away. So children, let me ask you, besides just being born into this wicked world, what penalty does the law charge your three-month-old child with? You don't charge them with nothing because they ain't did nothing yet. So in that same context, when we're born again in the be in, in, in born into this walk, we walk with a clean slate. So I'm going to show you this. Here we go. This is still in Peter. Look what he say. Look what he say right here. Oh, yeah, this is beautiful. Oh. Mm-hmm. Bring it up. Oh no, I said Pete. Uh y'all see that right there, James 1. Pure religion and undefiled. If whatever is undefiled is clean before God and the Father is this to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. To actually keep himself unspotted, uh, unspotted from the world. And look at this, what uh um look at this what the apostle says here, right here, Revelation 16 and hold on. It's 13. Is it 13? Yeah, or, you, wait, wait, it's Revelation 13? No, no, the verse 13 or 14. You uh, okay, no, it's, okay, okay. Thanks. That boy got it right in his head. He probably dream scriptures. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I done definitely been asleep before and stuff popped in my mind. Bro. bro, I bro, I bet. Yo, you be getting it in, bro. You been like that ever since I heard you ever since I heard your voice. That, that's, but that's a gift from the that's a gift from y'all, bro. Yeah, that's the grace of the Lord right there. I can't take no credit for that. Um, okay, hey, look at this. Revelation 16 and 15, Bazooka. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watch and keep his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So all through the text, the garments are these, it is the linen garment. And it says, hey, here, take this and keep your, um, uh, um, 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 keep your garment clean. What is the garment? The garment is that white fine linen, which represents what? It actually represents the righteousness of the saints, right? And so if that's the case, then that righteousness is something that's imputed to us. The father chooses to look at us in that light instead of looking at us in our sinful nature. And just to show what spots the garment bazooka, I wanna go to this last one. And then Dwayne, if you wanna jump in there, feel free. I'm gonna go to the book of Jude. Okay, the book of Jude, and look at this verse right here. He says, uh, verse 21, 
Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference. Now that a hey, hey, Dwayne, that kind of lean up, that kind of line up what you were saying as far as casting the probe for swine. See yes, how he said, and of some have compassion. People think they're just supposed to give everything to everybody. No, make a difference. But look at this. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Mm -hmm. Hating the garment. That is even spotted. Hey, thanks, um, Ak uh, uh, Akish. I didn't even know that the uh, mic was muted over there on Clubhouse. Thank you, Ak. I don't even know how long that was happening. But salute to you, Akish. Good to see you in here. My uh, for the light mayor and Ernest Higgs. What's good with y'all? So I wanted to put that on the table to show that uh, 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 being under grace and not under the law is just another way to say you are not condemned anymore under the penalty of the law. You are now living unto God through the righteousness in Christ. And that's something that's been given to you. Now you got to work to maintain that because as it said in, in Romans, if you keep reading down in chapter uh, six, he said, don't, don't get it twisted. Whoever you give yourself up to, that's who you're going to obey. If you give yourself to sin, then you are servant of sin. And if you are servant of sin, then you know what you're doing. You're putting yourself back under the law. You you want to add anything? Uh, oh yeah, to, uh, Dwayne. We just we dealt, just, you know, that told you a couple of weeks ago the series we've been running off the Matthew five and eighteen, and you know, of course, this something I told my sister, Little Muffin. That's what I call her. She don't like nobody to call her that, but me though. But uh. I told her when I, when she first decided when she get in the word that anything you read in these epistle letters you need to verify them in the script. You know what I'm saying? And and I and I do that because matter of fact, a friend of mine who say like I want to read all Paul letters in the New Testament where I start. And I said I'm just going to tell you what came on my heart when I first jumped in the word. I was like, man, I need to read back here, which is ringing my mind. You need to stay right here in Genesis and Malachi where you at. You know what I'm saying? Because he tell you the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. So when you look at it, he's saying you're not under law, but under grace, you would literally need to go back to the beginning. And it is ironic by the grace of Yahuwah that you would go to Revelation 16 and 15 because a lot of people see. See, one thing that we do, bro, is I want them to see the meaning of every single solitary word in a lot of verses that we read so they can actually see what was actually being conveyed. You know what I'm saying? Not saying to the point, oh, if you don't know Hebrew, you're not going to be saved. But sometimes, more often than not, if you take the time to look at particular words, you can see what is actually being conveyed. That's why I always found it hilarious that dudes that learn Hebrew would reject Yahusha when the Hebrew bear witness to him even the more. You know what I'm talking about? But nevertheless, when you go look when Adam and Eve did what they did, it said they were naked and they sold fig leaves on them. He said as soon as they did that, they would be under the law, which would be the penalty of death, which most individuals overlook is that when Yahuwah came looking for them and after he dropped those curses on them, it said he made them coats of skins, right? Most individuals look at that and just take that of coats of skins. But again, you can look it up for yourself. When you look up coats of skin in Hebrew, it literally means a linen tunic garment you know what i'm talking about so what he gave them was a linen garment so what was he showing you what does revelation 19 tell us that this is the fine linen which is the righteousness of the saints so in that subtle move of handing them a linen garment he was showing how they would be under mercy later because he was going to cover that sin because you know it's in isaiah 30 where he say you add sin to sin and seek for a covering but not by my spirit you know what I'm saying? So we kind of overlook that. The next time you see under law, not under the law, under mercy is when they violated with the golden calf because he's supposed to kill everybody. But instead, he spared them because that goes back when we were talking about a couple of weeks ago when he declared that mercy and forgiveness was a part of his name. So I'm only mentioning that for those who well, where is it at in the law type? Where can you find that at? It's in the beginning and then it's in you're uh, transversing through the wilderness. Then when you get in the gospel, 
you see it again. And what you see in the Gospels is what's in Psalms 130, if my memory serves me correctly. It says, if you who would mark sin, who would stand? But since there's forgiveness with him so that he may be feared. So when you go to John 8 and you see those men bring that woman who was caught in the very act of adultery, they said the law of Moses says she must be stoned. He said, what you say to do? See, uh, everybody just likes to say, oh, he that cast, who without sin cast the first stone as a means to absolve themselves for the wickedness that they like to partake in. When really that's referencing that Psalms 130. If he marks sin, nobody could stand. See, that was the fulfilling of the text, but people don't pay attention to that because the forgiveness is there so you can respect him. You know what I'm talking about? But then when all those people left, what did he say to that woman? He said, did anybody condemn you? She said, no, Lord. He said, I don't either. Go and sin no more. That's literally what Paul is expressing. He showed that in John 8, that you're not under law, you're under mercy. Because I'm going to forgive you because you should die. And that's a literal example of it in John 8. That woman should have died. You know what I'm talking about? That's but right. Here's mercy for you. And then look at the thing that he told her. He didn't say, stay strong, my sister. He says, sin no more, which is literally what Romans 6 say, which is literally what happened in the garden, which is what he told them in the wilderness. Okay, you sinned. I ought to kill you. Don't sin no more. You know what I'm saying? It's very simple. It's throughout the whole entire book. We overlook it. That's why it's like what you mentioned in Titus. We like to strive and argue about the law. For what? You know, the crazy part is most people who argue about the law, not even keeping it themselves. So they ought to be quiet. That's right. It don't even make no sense because you don't even realize you're doing what's in Second Samuel 13. You're condemning your. See, David, see, Paul, see, David is another example of that, which is you're not under law, but under grace. Because when Nathan stepped to him, he spoke a word of condemnation on his own head. You know what I'm saying? Which is what that Matthew 7, judge not lest you be judged come from he condemned himself now he spoke death on himself he ought to die but what did nathan tell him yahuwah has put away your sin so he was not under law he was under grace That's and right. then, because when you go to isaiah 55 it cements that when he tells you hearken unto me and i'll give you the sure mercies of david that's right you know what it's there the whole time it's just that most individuals are unskilled scribes. That's why, praise be to you, when he said in Matthew 13 and 52, every scribe which is instructed into the Malkuth for Shamahim is like a householder that bring forth out of his vessel things new and old. Most individuals are not instructed into the dominion of heaven. Mm. So they give you the information that pertains to the dominion of heaven for you to understand that what Paul, when you have an understanding of the word, this man letters are extremely simple. Woo. I'm talking about extremely simple. How people be talking about his letters are so difficult. But Peter told you, if you're unlearned and you're unstable, then they're going to be difficult for you. If you're stable in the Lord, if you're rooted, as it said in 2 Kings, uh, 2 Kings 19, if you take root downward to bear fruit upward, you know what I'm talking about? If you do that, and then, of course, if you are actually learned in the text, Oh, this man letters are very, very simple because you're just going to hear the law and the prophets over and over again. Because see, what we're looking for is he said, Ma uh, not Matthew, he said uh, Genesis chapter seven, verse nine. That's what you're looking for versus actually knowing the word and hearing the word and saying, OK, when he said this, this is what he's talking about. Because, see, we want to look at under the law is the curses. No, you had a curse before Deuteronomy 28 was ever given to you. And that was that curse of death. You're not under death anymore. Instead of dying, you can get some mercy. Now, if you choose to forsake that mercy, then, hey, you got to wait for the fiery indignation. And, and I don't know why you would want to do that. And you know what? Again, this comes up a lot. First John chapter two. That's Little right. Children do not sin. But if any man do sin, we have an advocate with the father. That's you right. know what that means? You're not under the law. You're under that grace because now I'm telling you what, don't sin. But guess what? If you What's mess that? up, that grace that you're under can still allow the father to choose to have mercy because he read the thoughts and intents of the heart. He know what he's dealing with. He know who you are. He knows who I am. So as Brother Dwayne was saying, the idea, what, what happens is in so-called church culture, 
you have many who will stick to Paul's letters and they won't go to the principles of the past. It's kind of interesting how Yeshua can set the principle. A, hey, under the law, this woman would have died. That's it's right. Technically, the crowd, this is the thing. Technically, the crowd, right. That's but right. Because everybody is under sin, I judge that ain't none of y'all worthy to condemn this woman. That's right. Now, he didn't tell them they wasn't worthy. He just pricked their heart with a statement. And they all on their own showed that they understood what was up when they judged themselves and walked off. And That's so right. when that woman, you know what? I don't condemn you then either. Guess what? She was under grace, showing you that grace. When it, it, it says grace and truth came through Mashiach. Messiah. That's right. What does that mean? He's the he's the author and the finisher of what's happening. And this is why many in Israel will find themselves not being able to come up to the uh, plate because we are rejecting what the father has showed us through his example. So that's anything right. Paul saying, he's see, not that, saying that, anything that, past that, what that's that, what's that, said. Let's take it even further, right? I'm going to add on to you mentioned the first John 2 and 1. You have yeah. to scriptural references for that you have moses when he went to advocate on your behalf when you sin in exodus 32 and then you had jeremiah and jeremiah 42 when the people came to him and said go to yahuwah for us because we done sin and whatever he tell us to do we gonna do you know what i'm saying and then to add on to that the mercy aspect what a lot of people don't especially israel to be specific you couldn't go to the mercy seat the mercy seat was behind the veil and you could not go you know what I'm talking about? You couldn't step to it. If you brought your behind back there, you were going to die. But when that veil was rent, when that man died, now the veil has come down and now you can come to this throne of mercy. That's why the mercy seat was hidden because you were under the law and not under grace. You weren't under that. That's why it was hidden behind the veil and only one person could go into it. And that was the high priest. And he couldn't go into it until he made an offering for himself and then for the people. So now you look at the goodness of Elohim. He went into the veil and made the offering once and for all. So now that you can come to it for time and the time of, of, of need, because that's why he said the law came by Moses. Moses didn't bring you mercy and faithfulness. That ain't what he brought you. He gave you a law. You know what I'm talking about? Point, that's what he gave. But when Yahusha came, he gave you mercy and the faithfulness of Elohim, and now you follow after that. And then, of course, if you follow after that, I would hope that common sense would say that you will obey the man's laws. You know what I'm talking about? But your motivation wouldn't be because, oh, we got to keep the laws. That's going to save me. It's because you know that you ought to die. This man showed mercy on you, so therefore you'll give him the proper reverence and respect. See, you shouldn't be just obeying the man because you think that's some badge of honor. You should do it because he delights in certain things and that you love him and that you wouldn't want to disappoint him. Your desire not to disappoint him should be greater than your fear of going to hell. You know what I'm saying? Because that means that you actually love the man. You know what I'm saying? A genuine. Most people don't love the man. You're only doing this stuff out of, I don't want to be punished. Versus the respect for the reward, like I said with Moses, you know what I'm talking about? When you got a respect for the reward, the punishment means nothing to you because the punishment is not even a thought. You love the man too much to even think about doing something in order to get punished. You know what I'm saying? But we don't have that level of faith. Hallelujah. And you know what's, you know what's interesting? He really mean it when he say, man, I'm not Elohim. That man, part of his name was forgiving sin and iniquity. Amen. Having mercy for thousands. Amen. But by no means clearing the guilty. He by showed his he showed his forgiving of sin and iniquity and his mercy on David. Yet David still paid. He just didn't pay what he could. That's right. Some people think grace says you done got away with everything. No, no that's not what it means. Even the children of Israel under Moses as a, a as a precursor. Moses mediated for the people, asked y'all to have mercy. Y'all had mercy. 10 times That's right, right. That's but right. With every mercy every grace he still, he still didn't clear the people of their guilt meaning they didn't just get you're not going to get away with sin we get mercy from what sin totally deserves what he told our first mother and father that's right as soon as you disobey me you you die that's right that's what it earns people it don't earn kind of death no it earned death 
And so anything that we've been given, especially with the death of Hamashiach, we got to hold on to that with dear with, with our dear life. So yes, we are not under the law, but under the grace. And all of you should be happy because if not, then that means we're all just kind of going through the motions of looking religious, but we all destined for the damn lake of fire. Absolutely. That's why that's I, what I mean. Dudes who say the New Testament ain't in effect, because that's pure stupidity. You know what I'm talking about? It's pure and utter stupidity. Cause one of the one of the uh one of the pieces of it is it said, Your sins and iniquity, I'll remember no more. So if we're not under it, his sins and iniqu our sins and iniquity, he must remember. But I mean, that's just simple. I explain this to people like this here, man. It's contract law. A contract is 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 not. See, we we gotta for some reason think, oh, this contract with Yahoo is not in effect till everything is complete. That's how I know that none of these men could have ever entered into a contract before. You know what I'm talking about? Ever. Because you know a contract, once you enter into the contract, the contract is enforced. It's not enforced once all of the, the terms are met. The contract is enforced the minute it's agreed to. You know what I'm talking about? And, and it's one thing that a lot of brews don't look at. So if we take a lot of brews thought process on that, then Abraham's covenant is not in effect because he never received the land. Neither did Isaac. Neither did Jacob. They all dwelt in the land of promises, strangers. They didn't receive that. That's you right. Know? That's right. So, you know what I'm saying? We broke the covenant in, in the wilderness before you even got in the land. So that means, so it was it was it not in effect? Oh, it didn't go in effect until you entered the land? That's stupidity. You, that's right. It's it, it, it's progressive. I'm making my statement in my terms. I already said I got to circumcise the foreskin of your hearts. That's what he said he would do for us under the new agreement. And you know what? This is the thing. What does that mean? And what does it look like? You don't get to tell y'all what circumcising the nation's heart looks like. Amen. You know what? It look, you know what? You know what? The circumcision start with y'all. Guess what it start with? Believe in the basura. That's right. That's you know, it. You know what the beautiful part is that we overlook is hmm. that that whole framework was shown in the book of Yahusha Son of Noon because he rebaptized them and he recircumcised them. That's right. And gave them the land and he was showing you what the the Yahoo Shah Hamashat were gonna come do, but we see it's just a beautiful thing. See, I know some Bruce they'll look at it be like, oh, y'all just want to point stuff out just to show how deep you is. If that's how you feel in your jackass mind, that's on you. We do this stuff because it reinforces the fact that the word of Elohim is true, that the father is faithful, that the witness that he left of his son, his son has came and fulfilled it, and we have an opportunity to live. And so this is for the strength in our faith, not to show how much we know, because at the end of the day, who are you to impress? Hey, in the volume of the scrolls, it's written under him. Go to every scroll, you're going to see flashes and shades of him. That's, That's right. You're going to see. I mean, it, it's not... You, it's not always this spelled out, look, this is Yeshua, this right here. Mm -hmm. You have to see it because you... He said, he said, whoever not born of the water and of the spirit... Mm -hmm. They can't perceive the kingdom. See, people think the word see there in some of our English translations just mean to look with your eyes. No, mm -hmm. I mean, you won't even perceive. It's right here. And you won't even understand that it's right in your face. And those who rejected Yeshua, as he told them in John 8, those who rejected him, and he said, you are your father, the devil. You know what they did? You know what? They was arguing with a man who they knew they had, who had power, but their lack of understanding didn't let them perceive. That's right. That's right. And, and then perceive, bro. They were just fulfilling the book because we just had this conversation about a couple months ago. When you look at Isaiah six and Isaiah twenty nine, which is referencing, think Matthew fifteen, and I think uh, I can't remember the other. I think it's Matthew thirteen. No, it's Matthew fifteen and, and another. What's escaping my mind at at the moment? But like Isaiah six is about the people that their hearts were, uh, their eyes were shut. The ears were closed. But when you get in Isaiah 29, he said he shut the eyes of the rulers and he said, open this book. He said, I can't because I'm not learned because you got teachers who blind. You got the people who blind. And, they, and and that's what people say. Oh, you spiritualizing the text or you superimposing him in the text or you you doing this and you doing that. When I just like, hey, man, it ain't given for you to know, bro. And that's just it's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's this ain't a contrary to popular belief. Yes. You who wants everybody to be saved. But the deep things of Elohim and the mysteries of Elohim is not for everybody. It's those that chosen aforetime. You know what I'm saying? And if they weren't chosen.
mind. That just means that they're a vessel fitted for destruction. That's their lot. And who am I to dispute with you who about it? You know what I'm talking about? Praise be to you. I pray that every last person who hear the sound of our voice right now is a vessel fitted for mercy. You know what I'm saying? But if you're not, you know what I'm saying? If you're a vessel fitted for destruction, praise God. And you know, you, you'll you beat your lot when it's time. Hallelujah. We got another question here. Let me see what this popping off with. Master Windu, for those of y'all who don't know, this is uh, the young Padawan Dre, and uh, he called me young Master Windu here. I'm starting to look more like Sammy L2, quiet as kept, but check this out. <laughs> he says, when we see the Most High put a spirit upon Saul, did Saul know? And I'll ask this, how do we know when the Most High has put a spirit on someone or maybe even ourselves? Well, the, that, that that's a very interesting question. I will say this, Saul understood that he wasn't getting a vision, but I'm not sure, maybe Dwayne might have something that that, that I'm not perceiving. Yeah. Go, go to 1 Samuel 10, bro. 1 Samuel 10, we'll go there, because I know that the evil spirit was put on him, but as far as like how much did Saul know, did he recognize it? Let's go right here. What what is this? Uh, what do you say? First Samuel no, about verse five. See, this is what we look at. First Samuel ten and five. All right. You look at with Saul, right? We have mm -hmm. to understand this first. Yes, the Ruach Hakadosh has been from the beginning, but it wasn't a permanent indwelling with man until Mashiach died and rose from the dead. Meaning, that's why you see people see the Spirit come on them and come off them. So, see, the Spirit of Yahuwah was on Saul. It came off him because he sinned. That's why you can see that in that Psalms 51, I believe, where David say, restore unto me your Ruach HaKadosh, because he know he sinned, so the presence of Yahuwah should depart. See, now when you're dealing with Mashiach, now, if you're born of Elohim, you don't sin. So if you receive mm -hmm. his you know what I'm saying? It's not going to depart from you because you're not going to do anything to cause it to depart. That's why the writer of Hebrews said it's impossible for someone who has tasted of it to go back. Mm. You know? If you actually see most brews, I, I had a brew tell me like, oh, receiving the spirit is just hearing the word. I'm like, you're an idiot because everybody hears the word, son. So you're telling me everybody got a spirit? That's retarded. That doesn't even make any sense. When we look at Saul, Saul didn't get, didn't keep a law to get a spirit on him. You know, who placed that spirit on him because of faith, because of what he told him to do. Samuel told him to do from the word of Yahuwah. But I think it's about verse five. It's going to just run it down. It's going to tell you about when Saul received it and what happened. Okay. So first Samuel 10. And, five. Says, and after that, thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines. And it shall come to pass when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery, a tabret, and a pipe, and a harp before them. And they mm -hmm. shall prophesy and the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee and thou shalt prophesy with them and shall be turned into another man. Mm. Let it be when these signs are come unto thee mm -hmm. that do as occasion serve thee for Elohim is with thee. So this is the thing that you'll look at. Right. And this is just he, going, he said, how would you know? If the spirit of you who will come upon you, what would it say with Saul? He will become a different man. So this mm. means he born again, because it actually says in another verse in this chapter, if I'm not mistaken, that he will give them another heart. Then, of course, later in the chapter, it says Saul prophesied. And then it said that the people said, is Saul a prophet? He prophesies like the prophet, which is where you get that statement with Mashiach. Like, man, we know your people. Where you get this power from? You know what I'm saying? Because that. He's fulfilling that with Saul because contrary to popular belief is even though Saul might be wick was wicked. Saul was still a king of Yasharal and you and Yahusha going to fulfill elements of this man because he was a king. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And we're not going to deal with the stupid part. You know what I'm talking about? But when you deal with before he went stupid. See, Paul, I mean, Saul is another example of this here. Right. Saul did not get. I mean, Paul did not. Get, uh, Saul did not get mercy. He sinned, and you will say, I'm done with you. And that's an example of uh, people. And, and it wasn't even like, and, and when you look at what his sin was, it wasn't on some old, he was worshiping idols or he was having illicit sex. This man gave you a direct instruction that you should have trusted according to faith and you didn't keep it. And the man said, I'm done with you. So that's why when you read that Romans 14 and 23, anything that is not of faith is sin to Yahuwah. 
If it ain't done out of faith, you done already sinned. See, we be screaming law, 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 but you done miss the fact that if you do something that it ain't according to the trust and the faithfulness of the word of Allah, you already sinned. And so you not eating pork don't do you no good. You might as well get you a pork chop sandwich. You might as well go hang out Saturday, Friday night. You might as well do whatever it is you want to do. Right. Get the full reward. So when you look at it, when Saul sinned, because this is also a, a common misconception that I hate that Hebrews say. That oh he got it, he got a lust spirit on him. Ain't no spirit getting on you, got you masturbating. You masturbating because you lack sexual discipline because you led by your lust. You're not a whoremonger because there's a spirit on you. You're a whoremonger because you don't control yourself. You dictated by pleasure. When right. an evil spirit is upon you, that spirit torments you. That's what the text says. You know what I'm talking about? When you read with Saul, Saul was being tormented. That's you right. And, and it took David playing that harp for that torment to stop. And whenever he stopped playing that harp, that man was tormented. So if you know you got an evil spirit on you, that spirit is going to torment you. Your life is going to be a living hell. And it's only going to be a torment that you will suffer. Not the people around you. Just you. You know what I'm talking about? And when you get the spirit of Yahoo on you, you will become a different person. You will not think the same. You will not behave the same. You will not serve the same. You will not live the same. You will not do anything the same because you will have the mind and breath of Allahim in you. You know what I'm saying? This stuff is very, very simple. Don't don't stop letting these people tell me I got the spirit of cigarette smoke on you. No, you're undisciplined pleasure seeking individuals and you refuse to chastise your flesh or mortify your members as the epistle letters say to cease from that's your problem there's no spirit on you because at that point you're giving credit to satan or evil spirits and therefore yahuwah could not justly condemn a man who is doing something outside of his own will hey yo i I'm going to, you brought it, you mentioned it, but I want to read it so right. people can actually see it when he just said what he said, right? Because Samuel knew that Saul was rejected, right? And right. Saul may not have understood it yet, but I, but to, to answer bro question, I'm going to say Saul understood because remember, this is different, but he wasn't the only one who understood. Those around him did as well. So here we go. This is uh 16. And, and, and remember, he had the spirit of the Lord on him. That's right. But as soon as David was anointed, the most high took his spirit off of Saul. That's and right. Verse 14 to say, but the spirit of Yah departed from Saul and an evil spirit from Yah troubled him. And Saul's servants said unto him, behold, now an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning player of an heart. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand and thou shalt be well. And this is when David was brought as a heart player eventually. So, yes, Saul understood and those around him understood as they started to see him tormented. They, they it, Whatever it is and whatever it looked like, the change was noticeable enough that they was able to point it out. And when Saul listened to the music, he understood, yeah, man, that the spirit is on me and I need whatever it is that the most high will provide so that I can get some relief. And he followed counsel. So yes, he knew that it was on that, that, it, that, it, that, that the evil spirit was on him, but also check this out because most of us know about, excuse me, most of us know about when, uh, uh um, um, when Saul was no longer getting visions, right? So right. in this same book, in chapter 28, I'm not going to go through the whole episode of him talking, trying to talk to Samuel and all of that, but notice what he said out of his own mouth as he talked to the familiar spirit. Hey, look up, look up trouble before you go around there in Hebrew. Let him see what it mean, what it mean specifically when he would get trouble so they can get up. When Saul was getting trouble? Yeah, let's look at us, see what it means so they can see what it mean. Okay. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to bring up the tools. Okay, we in the Masoretic text here. Troubled him. Ba'at. 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 To affright. To be, to be afraid or make afraid. To terrify. To fall upon. Startle. I, oh, the, yeah. This is the Brown Drivers Briggs. Excuse me. To, to fall upon, 
startled, terrified, overwhelmed is another one that they use here. So, and I'm only mentioning that so they can see what an evil spirit will do. It's going to bring terror to you. And you know what? More than likely, all the assurance that he had, it don't give you every moment, but he knew the difference. Absolutely. Between when that spirit came on him and now he prophesying and all of this happened. And then that change happened. Y'all, as soon as David got anointed, something changed in Saul. He didn't know David got anointed, but when Samuel did that, the Most High took his spirit from him and sent an evil spirit to trouble him. And here in uh, 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 um, uh, 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 chapter 28, 28, check and this that, out. And that just reinforced when it said, there's no peace to the wicked. Mm. Mm. Look at this. When Saul goes to the witch of Endor to try to conjure up the, the, I guess, the sleeping spirit of Samuel, look at what he says. Look at this. He says, uh, oh, oh, I'm like, I ain't, I'm still in chapter 15. All right, here we go. Look at this, brethren. So he was trying to get the Lord to talk to him and no prophet. The Lord didn't come to him in dreams no more. And that is what's going to trouble him. See, this is the thing. Remember, this man prophesied among the prophets. So what that means, the Lord say he speaks to the prophets by visions and dreams and he could go to the priest. They got the Urim and the Thummim. All the usual things he experienced are cut off from him. And look at what this man say right here to the familiar spirit that he's talking to. The familiar spirit right here, verse 15. Samuel said to Saul, why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? Saul answered, I am sore distressed. What? He mm -hmm. troubled. For the Philistines make war against me. And God is departed from me and answers me no more, neither by prophet nor by dreams. You know what that means? That man understood. That's right. He's not having no dreams no more. He's not getting that spirit that causes him to be able to prophesy. The prophets among them have no word of the Lord from him. He can't go to the Urim, to the priest and get anything. It is over. And so for us, the truth of the matter is this, you know, when you walk in and sin and you know that as you continue to do this evil, that peace and that assurance of faith you had to be inside the bosom of the father with Christ and the father, they coming in and sup with you. You don't feel like they living with you no more, but it's not just you're doing righteousness and you just feel God ain't with you. No, you're actually going to be able to admit to yourself that I am walking in wickedness. I am walking contrary to the oath that I took, if you will, when I swore allegiance to Yeshua through repentance, confession, baptism, and claimed to walk in the newness of life. And so all I can say is, is that we, the Holy Spirit upon us, will know. And I'll tell you this, and there's a great test that I like to put on the table because I don't believe it's something that Satan uh, can fake. Satan in us, if it's in us, it can't fake this one. Look at this, y'all. This is uh, 1 John 3. Oh, 1 John. Look at this. 1 John 3. It says this. I Because a brother asked me one time, he was like, yo, man, how do I just know that I'm I'm pleasing the Father, and that I'm not just you know. Sometimes I doubt myself. Well, that's because you still go through the motions of the flesh, and just sometimes, y'all. For some of us, we believe even just feeling tempted is sin. You don't. So sometimes you ain't did nothing, but just the fact that you tempted and gotta fight it, you feel like you done did wrong because you know that sin lie at the door if you don't make the right decision. Right? Look at this. He say First John three. In this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. That's why Saul fell, because Saul stopped loving the people correctly and he stopped walking in the righteousness of God. Point. It was, we not reading, Saul did well. 
and the Lord took his spirit off him because he got tired of him. That's not what the narrative is. Mm -mm. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that you should love one another. Now this Cain, who was of what? That wicked one and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. Marvel not my brethren if the world hates you. And this is one of my favorite texts in the entire text. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. That's right. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. See, at the end of the day, you want to, I, I, I don't claim to have all the answers. I, I trust in this word. You want to know if the spirit of the most high is with you? Be honest about your love and your servitude toward your brother. Be honest about it. Are you giving of yourself? Are you doing the things that you see in the person of Mashiach, the way he served the disciples and then told them, I have washed me being your master. I don't wash you Negro's feet. Now follow my pattern and watch and wash one another's feet. Can we look at ourselves and say, see, we want a miracle. I don't, right. I don't need to talk to the damn witch of Endor. I don't need a whole bunch of people. I don't need to walk among the prophets. How many of us are willing to constantly gauge if we really loving our brethren and serving them the way that we claim we know we are? If you know you ain't serving them, then you know that you're walking in the right, wrong spirit. As it say in the text, try the spirit by the spirit, not just other folk, but sometimes try and, 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 and you know, try your spirit, observe yourself. Yo, man, I, I think I've been into too much selfishness. I don't think I've been right with the brothers and the sisters as far as serving. I just been all about me. Get back on track. And if you serve, then that servant spirit, guess what? You might think it's yours, but no, the Bible says our righteousness is not our own. So if you can bring forth love the way that he prescribes, it says herein is the love of God understood. And we ought to love the way that he loved us. Notice what he said. Continue ye in my love. We better study that man love because if we understand his love, then we are gauging ourselves to his love. Not that we're exactly him, but knowing you got to love your brothers, at least for us together to be anything like him. But, you know, if you continue in his love, you, you're you not going to sin. It's not it's not going to happen. It's very, very simple. You know what I'm saying? That's why he that's why he harped on like we talked about this the other day. When you look up neighbor in Hebrew, it's real, it's friend, it's intimate, it's companion. You know what I'm saying? And and if this is your friend, that's why he say, Greater love have no man. See, he loved his neighbor as he loved himself. That's why he laid his life down for it. You know what I'm saying? But see, we don't pay attention to that. And and it ain't you ain't gotta do nothing extra. See, man, most of these dudes is very, very, very feminine. And when I say that, meaning because they're emotion driven. So I've told the brothers this many times. Since most of us aren't raised by men, we have a hard time with masculine authority and masculine correction. That's why you see so many brothers get upset when they're held accountable for their foolishness. You know what I'm saying? Or you don't you don't co-sign everything that they do. You know what I'm saying? If you've been around men, you know that, hey, if a brother say he's going to do something and you can tell him I don't agree with that, but y'all don't fall out behind it. You just let it be known, bro. I don't believe that you should do that. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that's the best move for you. But he ain't going to look at you. Oh, you ain't my friend. You know what I'm saying? And then walk off and try to talk down on you to other people to come ride with you in your bad decision making. Then when stuff blow up in your face, you want to slide over here or you separate from people. Now you want to talk down on their name. Because you don't kick it with them no more. You know, every time people separate, there ain't got to be no issue. If you want to go over here, then go over here. But when it come down to it, you don't want to get told about yourself. You know what I'm saying? You don't want nobody to tell you, bro, that was stupid. What's wrong with you? That was a dumb move. Oh, why you got to belittle me and talk to me like that? Take your panties off, boy. What's wrong with you? You a man. Because one day you're going to have to leave somebody, bro. And if you can't even take that, that, that that's the D boy couldn't even take the Lord, man. The Lord looked at his apostles and told them they were stupid. When he resurrected from the dead, he said, oh, fools and slow of mind. Slow of mind in Greek means stupid. He looked them in the face and called them stupid. You know what I'm talking about? Now, imagine if, 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 a, if a brother did that now. Boy, these dudes would lose their mind. And these were men that he handpicked. And he looked him in the face and said, man, y'all stupid, man. You ain't believe what I said. 
What about the times they asked him questions? He said, man, you without understanding too? But see, you know why he did that to those men? Because again, it's because we're not raised by man. When a man raises you, he expects a lot from you. So when you do something, it's not necessarily to belittle you. It's that I expect more from you. And when you don't give me what I expect from you based on how I trained you, I'm going to tell you about yourself. Because, because you got to come follow in my footsteps later, son. I can't play kid gloves with you. I can't nurture you. I'm not your mama. You know what I'm saying? I'm a firm believer that once a young boy turns five years old, ain't much much mom dudes can do for him. You know what I'm talking about? She you know she he need all. That's not to say she can't nurture and love him and all that stuff. Right, 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 right. Once he get to five, he need pops. Hey, once he wean, yeah, he need. Oh, we out. Ain't much she could do for him because now he has to go interact with men. Preferably one day he may be a leader of men, if not a leader of men, a leader of a household. And he got to be able to take stuff on it. I don't think many of us would have been able to walk with Yahusha and take his rebuke because the book said he was an austere man. That means he was rigorously self-disciplined and uncompromising. And I don't believe a lot of brothers could take it. You know That's what I'm right. saying? A um, man, hey, 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 look, if people believe what Isaiah 53 say, we love to go and read it all the damn time. It said this was a man acquainted with grief, a man of much sorrow. The, the the crown he wore, the conscience he had for his love for the people and just seeing him suffer and the things that would even make him upset that he got to address. Man, you hypocrites, you snakes. Look, John living in the wilderness. Look, man, a man who a man who survived on, on, on honey, combs and, 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 and wear a damn camel suit. Look, bro, all I'm going to tell you is this. When that man said, yo, all of Jerusalem and Judea came out to him for the baptism at the Jordan. And that man said to the people, you brood of vipers who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. That's How do right. you respond to that kind of person? Huh? Well, said, it's not. It's, it, it's to prick the heart. And you know what? Remember that, remember that stranger woman when Yeshua said what he said to her. She was like, yeah, the dogs did this, that, and the third. That man said, hey, I'm going to let y'all know right now. I haven't found this level of faith in all of Israel. That's I feel what I had to say. I tested her heart. What, nothing going to keep her from what she wanted. And he said, I'm telling you right now, many from the east and the west going to walk into the kingdom and they're going to sit down at the table and eat with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And That's you right. flesh and blood children of his, you children of the kingdom. Y'all not getting in. Y'all going to be in outer darkness. We was just building on this earlier with my homie Black Tastic. Like, yo, this is really what is being put on the table and would it take to make that judgment? The wedding feast. People want to go to the wedding feast, but it's this one huge, uncomfortable part. Homie come in, he like. Man, what kind of clothes you got on, boy? Yo, what? Hey, yo, get homie up out of here. Like, like, look, you know what? A man acquainted with grief. You, you. Have you ever made someone's acquaintance like you know them like he knew grief and he's in the flesh, a man who a, a man in the flesh who experienced grief and, and, and take on the sorrow of people. That's a, that's a man who could not mix in his words. All the love of God is in him, but he's going to tell you straight up and down how it is. He's going to keep it tall. Yeah, we ain't, we, we, ain't, we ain't ready for that, man. But dudes too emotional because they too and they, and I'm glad you mentioned something earlier, right? And I want to tell people this here, man, because I don't have people ask me this many times over the years. Just because you have a temptation. Remember the man say, man, blessed are those who endure temptation. He say, why pray? Bless you. Just because you're tempted don't mean anything. You're still in the flesh, my G. I just want everybody to know you still in that. Everybody, man, you're going to have moments where your flesh is going to go left. That doesn't make you evil. That's what Paul say, evil is present with me. You know what I'm saying? But I love the law of Elohim in my heart. See, he allows the word to take root. It's not the fact that your flesh is there and you get, because you know it's a verse that people take out of context, because again, you need to look it up in Hebrew. It say the thoughts of foolishness is sin. So they think, oh, I got foolish thoughts, I'm sinning. But thoughts translates to plots, plans, and devices. So it's your plot of evil that is see if you're not plotting and devising evil then you ain't committed no sin it's just your flesh does not have a desire to be restrained 
You know what I'm talking about? So you that's where the temperance come in. That's where the self-control come in. You restrain it with the word. You could have all manner of lust, but you allow the word to win. You know what I'm talking about? Now, it's different if you sitting around and you like, boy, I'm going to sleep with his wife tonight. See, you evil. You know what I'm talking about? When I say you evil, I mean you have an evil mind because you have a mind that's departing from the living Allahim. You're desiring to leave. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's different versus you've seen something and a desire came in like, oh, I want to do this. Or I want to do that. Or you find yourself in a low state and you know what I'm saying? It's, it puts this, I tell brothers this all the time, right? Peter, he told Peter, man, when you convert it, strengthen your brethren. A lot of people feel like they don't want to say they faith weak. But you could see people coming to the Lord and say, please strengthen my faith. That doesn't make you uh, a weak individual. It doesn't make you an evil individual. It makes you a stronger individual to say that because that means you have a desire to be strong. You know what I'm saying? As the text saying, Joel, let the weak say that I'm strong. It's OK because he said my grace is sufficient for you because it's made perfect in weakness. You have to understand that his mercy is sufficient for us. It's made complete, whole and sound and the weakness and humility that you can offer. And if you go to him, which is going again to the mercy seat, you can get the strength. I, I just don't be wanting people to look down on themselves on stuff that is natural. Your flesh has a natural desire to go astray. That's right. You know what I'm saying? You have to understand that. Just because you're in the word does not mean your flesh is going to go away. Just because you're in the word don't mean ungodly desires will not rise up. And he showed you that because this man knew he had to die and he had a desire for the cup to pass. Hey, you know it say a man who uh, a, 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 a man who can control his tongue and get his body in check, that's the same as a perfect, perfect. man. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we're working toward, the perfect man, man. we man getting this mouth under control, and the way you get the mouth under control is getting the mind under control. And, and, and it's attainable. Give us that ability. It's attainable. I want everybody that can hear the sound of my voice right now to understand. You can be a perfect man. If, if you couldn't, he wouldn't have told you you could be. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Don't let nobody tell you that because at that point they're telling you that Yahuwah is a liar. He told Abraham, walk before me and be you perfect. Your law say in Deuteronomy 18, be you perfect with Yahuwah. You're told to be perfect numerous times. Don't let anybody who tell you can't be perfect. That man is a liar from the pits of hell and an agent of the devil. Because Yahuwah would never tell you that you could do something that you couldn't do. Because the minute he condemned you for doing something that he said you could do, but you actually couldn't do it, that make him unjust and he would have to condemn himself. So we know that that's not going to happen. <laughs> so we know that you can do it. But oh, the, you have to block out the noise <clears throat> of unbelievers who telling you that it's not attainable when he's telling you that it's attainable. You know what I'm saying? See, we, we right. talked regularly bro and i and we move on to the next thing man when this man is giving you understanding that means he wants you to be saved you know what I'm, see if you're not getting understanding that means he don't want you to be saved so what does that mean by that when you get insight into the mystery into the plan into the will of Allahim, that mean that why would he be giving you that if he didn't want you to to live so you can't get caught up in, we got to stop these false doctrines over here. You can't be concerned with that because he told his apostles himself. You see them? Them the blind leaders of the blind. Leave them alone. See, it's a lot of people sinning against the Lord every day when you feel like you need to go out on a mission and stop a false doctrine. When he told the men he chose, man, leave them people alone. <laughs> I don't know why y'all think that this man, man, but again, I say that because in my personal opinion, that's feminine behavior. Because a woman always has to convince everyone she come across of her point of view. You know what I'm talking about? Men understand. I'm going to tell you. I said what I said. If you don't accept it, that's fine. Because I already believe it. And if you reject it, I just, that ain't got nothing to do with me. And I'm out. You know what I'm saying? I'm not finna keep. No, I'm not doing that. I told you once. I told you twice. I'm not telling you seven, eight, nine, ten times. Because in reality, you don't believe it. You're trying to convince yourself. You're not trying to convince them. Do you know what I'm saying? Because if you convince, you're not doing that. Men don't do that. You never seen Yahoo Shah beg anybody to believe his point of view. He said it, you accept it, or you don't, and I'm out. And if they and if they talk greasy, he checked them and went by the <laughs> Oh, I love it. Hey, we you know what? What, what time is it? Wait, wait, wait. 
10, five. But you know what? Okay. I want to put one more. Hey, y'all, I know it's probably 10 more questions in here. But look, I'm, I'm, I'm paying attention to the chat in the comment section tonight. And I got my bro with me to give me a hand since he came on. And man, at a fighter point. Um, my man, Hakodesh. If you still here, Ak, we looking at what you got here is your interpretation of John 316 for the most part equivalent to how modern Christianity views it. It reads like uh, Mashiach expected Nicodemus to already have understanding as to what he was saying. Okay, but oh, oh you know what? Let's actually go there right quick. I think I understand your question. I, let me bring up. Oh, I, I think I'll, yeah, I'm already there. I'm already there with you. No, no, I'm not. I'm bugging. Yeah. First, yeah. my bad, bro. That was my last uh, point. John 3. Let's go to John 3, 16. Now, this is the thing. I don't think it's verse 16 exactly per se that Yeshua was making a point about. It was the point about being uh, about being about mm -hmm. being born again. And in verse four, uh, 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 verse three, it says, Yeshua answered him, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot perceive the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Now, this is Yeshua going down the list. He's responding to that. That's Here right. we go. Yeshua answered, verily, I say to thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said, you must be born again. The wind blow where it blows, and you hear the sound thereof, but you can't tell from where it come and where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. So he letting them know, yo, man, if you're going to understand the kingdom of God, you got to change. That's okay. at the end of the day, that's what he's saying. And that change, hey, 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 hey brother Dwayne, by the most highest grace, I, when you walked in your sin and you did the things you did and you had to sit, be sat down and whatever, the, the, the Lord put the powers that be on you who don't bear that sword in vain, all of that, whatever you did out in the street, whatever possible problem you could have had with women, all of these things you could have been involved in. When that stopped, I, in your in, in your repentance, it's not that you expected when Yah was going to bring that, but when he brought it, you understand you're going through a process. But to everybody else outside of you, I, when they start to understand, to them, it came out of nowhere, bro. They don't know. Ain't no clue where it came from. Like yo, you know, like yo, you know, old boy Dwayne. Yeah, man, he on something else. No, nah, nah. that happened? I don't know. I just seen him and I heard from such and such. Yo, bro, I don't know. I want to holler at him. I want to know what happened. Now I say this here, say that though, with the people who I grew up with who know me, know me. Mm -hmm. Who that? If I, they'd be like, boy, they know, boy, boss, do something. That mean he on that. So they mm. are. I do that. They know I'm dead serious. You know what I'm saying? One of my homeboys was like, oh, I believe he was going to do this when we were young. You know what I'm saying? I was like, nigga, you crazy as all I know. But that's just what he told me after the fight. But it was more so like, oh, it's wild. It's different. Like, they know me. So they like, oh, a bro. Matter of fact, I had a homegirl I used to mess with, man. I hadn't seen her. When I when I started, uh, got reconnected with her on Facebook, man, I think I hadn't seen her in like eight, nine years. You know what I'm saying? I used to put work on there every now and then. And she said, son, she talking about, uh, she said, I know you living it. I said, how you know I'm living it? It's just, I'm, I'm on the internet. You don't know what I'm doing. She said, but I know you, though. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's so right. she knew that, oh, if he owned this then this is serious to him. I know he going to stay just know I ain't the type. Because even when I was hustling, man, I wasn't finna be faking like I'm this, this. If, if I'm going to be in the game, then I'm going to be in the game. If I ain't going to be in the game, then I ain't going to be in it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just not finna do nothing just to be doing it. Even running a business, like, it's not going to be no hobby. If we're going to do it, then we're going to do it. You know what I'm saying? But well, yeah. But I mean that that that's just cause just how I was raised, to be quite honest. Which it could be some things that were intrinsic, but to me it didn't make sense to pick the book up to play with. But what I no, and you know what? I get that. But it's gonna be many people, bro, that when they see it, it's gonna be like it came out of nowhere. Now they might take you seriously once they see it, like, oh, he on something else. But the change, it, it's not seen. 
No, I will. It's just, like, it's just like the wind coming out. Hold on. Now, I will say this here now. There was some ridicule of some of my homeboys who thought, oh, you trying to be this here? Because it was a chick I used to mess with in high school. We were riding away. She wanted me to, to knock her down. But she didn't know that I was really on that like that. Like, I'm kicking it with her, talking to her about it. Because I remember that. She looked me in my face and was like, what do I have to do? to make you want to have sex with me. I think really she was having a low self-esteem moment. I don't think she felt like she was at her, her her top level physical peak. You know what I'm saying? But I was like, shoot, absolutely nothing. There's nothing that you can do. You know what I'm saying? And they were like, man, if I was you, I would have hit her, this, that, then, and the third. I ain't got nothing to do with because it was more so like, oh, you really doing it, which, of course, the word going to tell you that. If people dealing with it and they not really doing it and you really doing it, they going to talk greasy. That's you right. But it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I don't live for the thoughts, concerns, and cares of other people anyway. What a person think about me means absolutely nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? And I felt like that before the word. Like, I don't care what you think about me. I don't care what you got to say about me. But by how my granddaddy raised me, though, I'm going to do what it is that I set my mind to do. I, I'm unconcerned with the thoughts and opinions of other people. You know what I'm saying? What What is your... If I if I'm moved by what you think about me, then I'm, then I'm not actually me. You know, you, you know what's interesting about that? Because when you got someone like a Pharisee of report, uh, yes, a man uh, of the Pharisees, a ruler of the Jews. See, at the end of the day, in order for him to walk into the kingdom, he's going to have to make a different move. And among his brethren, just like Paul, eventually, when the change happens, when he starts to be changed by that water and that spirit, that's going to cause a scenario with him among other Pharisees. Yeah, they gonna look. You already know what Yeshua said about the Pharisees and how they move and get down. Yeah, they were. Like I said, like a hypocrite in Hebrew would mean unfaithful. So when he was saying, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which they were faithful. That's why he said your righteousness has to exceed them because they were not faithful. Now, yeah. look at this. Look at this. He said, wait, wait, hold on. I got that. Oh, wait. Nicodemus answered and said to him, verse 9, how can these things be? Mm. So when Yeshua put, when Yeshua says these things, um, HaKodesh, then Yeshua responds, are you a master in Israel and know not these things? See, at the end of the day, if you, if you all are truly dedicated to the word of God. You should know. You know huh? Would you say I? They should know it. They should know it. Now, people can say, well, well, well why should he know that? Because it's all about what you understand being born of the water and being born of the spirit to mean. And he's saying you a teacher in Israel and you don't know these things. You know what that means? That what you all are doing while you're sitting in Moses' seat, you don't have the spirit of Moses. You mm. all are not tuned into Yah in mm. that same spirit, in that same necessity. And you all have, and what did Yeshua tell them in Mark chapter 7, I think? He said, by your traditions, That's you right, have right. made the commandment of Yah ineffective, and now you're teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. So let's mm -hmm. be real. That is what he comes from, and because of everything else they've been adding over time, these deeper things, these weightier matters of the Torah went right past many of them. Point blank, period. So that's what Yeshua was getting on them for, bro. And then he says, verily I say to you, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen. Amen. We receive not our witness. So if I have told you earthly things and you don't believe it, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Now, look at this. Yeshua is basically saying this ain't even far above your pay grade, my guy, because it's something that all men on earth who claim that they're going to search after Yah are supposed to understand. And you know what? That's what's going on to this day. All these dudes talking about they masters and chief high priests and Yasharal and don't know nothing. Just dumb as a box of rocks. Dumb dogs that can't bark. You know what I'm talking about? They don't know this stuff they supposed to know. And and what brothers and sisters need to ask themselves is why these men don't know it. Hmm. It's too many brothers and sisters who got questions about the word that these men are not answering and they should have these answers. I done ran across too many people. I done seen too many people fall off from Mashiach or fall off from the word entirely because these men can't answer their questions and they've been teaching the word 20 and 30 years. And quick to tell you, teaching it and they stupid.
And don't nobody want to say that they stupid. But then you forget that Yahusha walked around and told these people to their face they were stupid. Now, he didn't talk, call Nicodemus that because he had respect for Nicodemus because Nicodemus rocked with him. You know what I'm talking about? But he was just letting him know, like, bro, you know, you're supposed to know this stuff, my G. And you don't know it. This is troubling. You know what? Look at this. He says, no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the son of man, which is in heaven. Mm. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. Yeshua letting them know, I'm standing in front of you, but I'm the one who come down from heaven. And even now, as I speak to you, where is his mind? Remember what he told the rich man? He said, where a man's treasure is. That's where his heart is. So he letting you know, my, my mind and my focus is on the things above. And so I, that's where I am. And that brethren, all of us are going to have to take on that nature, that nature Amen. that while we are right here on the earth, where our mind is, is on the high things, the heavenly things. And look at what he says. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So, hey, bro, part of your being born again, if you don't understand the kingdom, you're going to have to listen to me. You're going to have to deal with me. You can't right. be talking about ain't no man. We know that a man come a, a man like you got to be sent from God because of the miracles you do. Well, the miracles is cool. They get people attention. But what I got to tell you and what you got to do, that's what's going to allow you to see the kingdom. Just because I do miracles don't mean you're going to perceive the kingdom. And you know what's the beautiful about a amount of people and they still is, there with that is that and and we verified this in the old too like miracles are not even for people who believe anyway those are he say prophecy the word is like if you believe the word that's all you hold to need you don't need to see nothing else other than that when you find yourself needing to see something other than that you a wicked and adulterous generation just like he said mm -hmm. you know I mean? word should be enough I don't think a lot of brothers and sisters really take joy of the word itself. And I think it's because too many out here smoking bad dope. It's a lot of dudes out here putting bad packs on the street. You know what I'm saying? Stuff watered down. It's bright brown hairs in it. It's trash. You know what I'm saying? It's bad. Bad. Because look, see, everybody know, man. I know everybody out here done smoked some weed or did something in their time. Maybe even harder drugs. And right. when, when you used to using bad dope, and you run across some junk that's really, really good, it gets scared you. Because you ain't used to it. You know what I'm saying? And too many brothers and sisters, man, because look, I, I love the word, bro. I Yeah, I preach the word. I ain't got no problem listening to another man preach the word. Don't offend me in the least. But boy, a lot of these dudes is trash. A lot of these dudes is trash. I'm talking about pure, unadulterated trash. I used to tell you this all the time. He'd tell me, he'd be like, man, it's because you know it's like a rapper. You know, I say, nah, bro. It ain't even because I preach that I'm like, dissecting it from a preacher's perspective i'm dissecting it from an information heavenly minded it made me think why you say people used to tell me the street you too heavenly minded to be any earthly good i say nigga that don't even make sense you know what i'm saying like what you said don't even make sense i didn't know that was a church saying you know what I'm saying? I'm, right, right. but i'm like bro these dudes is trash and i ain't gonna call no names on here because that ain't right because these men ain't here but i tell them that to their face if they were like bro you trash bro i've heard you you suck you know what i'm saying i don't care what the crowd is telling you dude you suck and i'm not trying to peel off your audience or your following because i could care less about any of that but i just want you to know that you suck you know what i'm saying and i know the lord is not with you based off the information that you bring you know what i'm saying he can't be mm -hmm can't be you know what i'm saying and i say that meaning if the if the the teachings are carnal you who is not in that i don't care who they are you know what i'm talking about if it's focusing on your flesh if it's focused on the law that the, the spirit of you who is not present in that because that's not life you who is life everything about him is life everything about him is life he's light he's no part darkness this man is life and if the teaching does not spark eternal life as you just stated that your mind is rooted in heaven because it's literally called the kingdom of heaven that means you're seeking the dominion and rule of the heavens if that's not the teaching bro you ain't really hitting on nothing that boy's selling you some bobby brown man that's some cut on coke man that junk got acetal you know what i'm saying and all type of stuff in it man boy dropping a rope spray on you man 
that mean it ain't it ain't it, it ain't truly effective. It's a whole yeah. bunch of false chemical put on it to get you high. And as soon as you feel like, as soon as you see you've been swindled, you're gonna have a problem with folk. But you know what? A hey, for God so loved the world that That's he right. gave his only son that whosoever believeth for him shouldn't perish and have eternal life. He's letting Nicodemus know, hey man, the miracles and all of that. The Pharisees, see, at the end of the day, you know why I rock with Nicodemus? Because he came to him to have that one-on-one. -on -one. And That's he came, like, yo, you can't do all this stuff you're doing and not be sent by God. But what attracted the people? So Yeshua testing them. And he also showing them, yes, you are a master of, um, uh, 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 you are a master among the people. But you still got to learn the deeper meaning of this text. Because I feel you should know what I was, you should have known what I meant. So you listen to me. Listen to me. And you know what? We don't read every interaction between them. But I'll tell you this. Out of the three accounts that give that, that talk about Yeshua's death, when he Joseph and Matthias came, came to get his body, guess who was with him? Nicodemus. Nicodemus. Yeah, because he rolled with him. With him. You understand? Yeah. So that, and at the end of the day, I'm not sure, you know, when, when Christianity talks about for God so loved the world that he gave his only son and how they might necessarily interpret it. But when it says that God so loved the world, it's saying that he actually loved man. That's he right. He loved man to the point that he was willing to do this for man. But this is the thing. Even though he did it for man, many are going to come on to faith, but not all. And so at the end of the day, if we're going to see the kingdom, if we're going to perceive it and understand it, we better really get to knowing what it means to be born of the water and born of the spirit. And so, hey, look, y'all, it's been fun. But I got to tell y'all this, it's pushing 11. We've been up since about 6 a.m. around here. So most high willing, we got an early day tomorrow to try to finish up this contract. But um, yo, brother Dwayne, man, I, I I appreciate you hopping in on these uh first nights of the week and just getting it in for a couple hours, helping edify the brethren. A couple of people on here. Wait, hold on. Somebody said something earlier. I had chuckled a bit, but I already want to break. Uh, wait, hold on. My man Dre said, uh, yo, keep bringing the ock on. Y'all like Peyton and Marvin Harris. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all finna cast. Oh, all my demons out. Wait, hey, 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 I'm glad you edify. I, that's what's up. And then our sister here said, Zay, you and the brew make a great tag team. And, and, and then she talked about, she was commenting on uh, when you had brought up what Peter said about Paul's letters. But yeah, so it, it's brethren on here who, you know, now that they didn't see you a couple of times, they're like, okay, yeah, I, yeah, 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 he might have some good dope. <laughs> Yo, I appreciate you, Ock. Thank you, man. Hey, hey, hey salute to you and your household, Ock. Appreciate it. Thank you, bro. Yeah, y'all. So that's Brother Dwayne. Make sure, hey, hey Brother Dwayne, uh, 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 let some of them know again where they can come and um, holler at you because you right here on YouTube as well. And some yeah, of them yeah. know. The channel is uh, Assembly of the Firstborn. Uh, we go live every Wednesday night at 7.30, every Shabbat night at 9 o'clock. Uh, probably say in uh, October or November, we'll go to eight o'clock whenever time go back. Mm, we'll yeah. start at and then Shabbat day at at three o'clock. Usually three o'clock, sometime two thirty, but more close to three o'clock. Uh, when Tabernacles roll around, we'll go live every night. Uh, so you know what I'm saying? But I mean, mainly everything that we do is rooted behind John five thirty nine. You know, search the scriptures because in them you think you have eternal life. And uh, there they was testified me. And then everything else just sprang out of that. Uh, if you're looking for uh, we the Israelites and we're going to take the kingdom, I ain't the person for you. You know what I'm saying? If, if you're dealing with you want your faith strengthened, uh, you want to get understanding of this man will and get the information required that you can receive this man's spirit, then I might have what, what you're looking for. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. One thing you do is that we'll kick it like you you can holler at me like it's not no big deal you could you know what i'm saying you can get my phone number you can call me i ain't gonna put you at no arms left if, if you jump on the stream you can ask questions you ain't got to be like i don't feel like i'm gonna say nothing because i will acknowledge you've always done that we've been doing it because i ain't never did it no different.
You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, then it's just a waste of time. That's right. The objective is for you to understand. That's that's what we're here for. We're here to be saved. So if you're trying to save your soul, then this might be the trap house that you might want to pull up on. If you ain't trying to save your soul, you might want to go to another trap around the corner because we ain't going to have what you're looking for. You know what I'm saying? I can't really tell you that no other way. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you might get offended. Sometimes I say nigga. I'm telling you that now. That might bother you. You know what I'm saying? They'd you be know? all right. They didn't hurt me saying. No, no doubt. And then also say, times. say this here too, just some people pop on. And sometimes we use analogies using women. But we're really not talking about women because the body of Mashiach is referred to as a woman. And that body is actually representative of men. And a lot of the things that brothers are complaining about what modern women quote unquote do is what you do to your husband. So when I use those analogies, I'm using that analogy to reflect your the behavior that you complain about women is what you who will want you to see that that's how you behave towards him. And it's actually stated in Jose Fo. He said you separated with adulterers, but I won't punish you for it. And he say those that have understanding, they gonna fall. Who don't have it, they gonna fall. You know what I'm saying? And we use that. And you might think I might be going off on tangents about nothing, but I'm gonna bring it back to the word as my homeboy. <laughs> like a boomerang you thinking that i'm going way over here but we're going to bring it back so it can oh, yeah. you can understand because you can relate to it same thing the lord same thing everybody in the text did give you a real life example that you can relate to all right see now i know uh, yeah okay wait hold on zadok and moray bonton they good, but they ain't a better duo than Hambone Johnson and Washboard Willie Walker. Now, oh, man, I just, all right, man. I, I ain't black tastic. You, I, I don't even know who that is. Hambone Johnson and Washboard Willie Walker. Some two black Negroes somewhere playing banjo, singing a, a bluegrass. That's what that is. He, yo, he wild like that. He always makes them kind of comments. But hey, bro, appreciate you being here, Yashia. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the support, bro. So, hey, yeah, Dwayne, man. Um, so, hey, bro, you already know what it is, most high willing. You know, you already, yeah, hey, 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 that bat, that, that bat signal go out, man. If you see it, you already know what's oh, up. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't got nothing shaking, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm rock with you. Ain't nothing wrong. You know what I'm saying? Shoot, man, I had a time period in my life, man. I, I served word seven days a week. I mean, mm, mm. You know? That ain't that ain't nothing. That ain't a big deal to me, man. Plus, it just allowed people to hear some things that they may have never considered before. And then after that, you let, you let Yahuwah do what he do after that. Y'all heard that. Hey, peace and blessings to y'all. Uh, pray that your week goes well. And may the spirit of y'all be with you. Hallelujah. Appreciate you, Dwayne. Bless you in the yes, house, man. You too, bro. Hey, y'all. That's my bro, Dwayne Bot in there. And, and the thing is, he see the link and he come up. So if some others of you wanted to come up, we could have had three, four people on the panel because I, I, I wanted to I wanted to concentrate on the chat and I got my mind. But when you got another mind or two that you trust, like Black Tastic, y'all know he got a great sense of humor. But me, Dwayne and, and, uh, and Black Tastic on the panel talking that talk, it just get even more ridiculous. It get all some people feel it's kind of unfair, <laughs> but it is what it is. It's for the edification of the body. So I appreciate y'all coming in, supporting the dojo tonight, and um, keep everything in prayer, everyone. And y'all make sure that you know in in uh, in your families that you continue to uh, 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 put your best foot forward because what I've come to learn, and many of you may know this as well. Hey, salute to Che Burgess. I didn't even recognize you earlier. Um, I uh, salute, salute. Um, yo, your people watching just because they may not follow you to your Sabbath class or your Sunday church service or whatever. If they are taking you seriously because they truly see the change in your life and it's, con excuse me, and it's consistent. They're watching and they may not always have to say it to you, but they hold you as a standard of what it possibly looks like to just become morally better, more morally superior to your old self. And what that affords you, 
is this opportunity. When they ask you how or why, that's always your opportunity to deflect the glory back to the Father and the Son. Just remember that, y'all. Remember that. All right, y'all. Good night. Salute. Salute.